Carol mentioned something about it. Uh, 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 um, I think, uh, despite the changes, we do have a one on four of us here. So I think we'll start the meeting. Is that okay? <laughs> no, I agree with that. Okay, since we have a quorum, I'm um, going to call the um, Portland Board of Student Regional and Union 60 School Committee to order. Um, who's the chair of the Board of Student School Committee? Who's going to be the chair of the Board of Student School Committee tonight? Moved. Jim. Wow. Jim is chair. I will call the Boyle Student Committee to order. Corporate Berlin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so all the committees are then called to order. Uh, Ed, you look at your agenda. Um, and then we'll look at your agendas. We have the consent agendas coming up, so we'll do it by the committee. We haven't had a policy meeting yet. No, no, look at the agenda, the consent agenda. Okay. Under the Berlin School Committee. Okay, let's. Um, we need a motion. To a motion, I move to approve, to approve the a motion to agenda. approve. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'll second this and something on the other button coming over here. Uh, do you want to hold the vote, Ed? Could you hmm? hold the vote? Call the vote? I'll call uh, for a vote. Yes, I'll call for a vote. Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. I move to approve the Boylston School Committee consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do I have a motion to vote the Berlin Boylston Regional School Committee? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Second to Ed. Um, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Deborah, how are you doing? Are you doing um, on perfect. All right. Good. <laughs> But we knew that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have any communications? I'm not aware. Nothing. Okay. Do we have any petitions and audiences related to items on the agenda? No, I see nothing. Hi, Angela. Okay. We are into the reports section. So we have a new student joining us. Nick Camila is our student representative for the year. Welcome, Nick. Thank you. Do you have a report for us? Yeah. Okay. Right. The opening day of school was on Friday, 825. Student council will welcome sixth graders for an orientation, at, as well as welcome all 611 students on opening day. Fall sports started right up with boys and girls soccer, field hockey, cross country, and football. The boys varsity soccer started out strong with a victory over Oakmont 4-0 and a win over Middlesex 2-0. From held by two senior captains in Nick McGrath and Noah Dobbins. The girls varsity soccer won their season opener against Narragansett 5-1. Thanks from the leading cap senior captains, Devin Marshall, Alyssa Kohler, Hallie Starkey, and Sandy Cl Clancy. The girls uh, varsity field hockey blew out Clinton at their season opener 6-1. Strong leadership from the senior captains Allison Fleming, Rachel Lilly, Casey McCallick hope to go for their third season as undefeated league championship, take championships. Cross country has their first meet on Thursday. Uh, it was uh, Thursday that happened last week. Oh, no. No, it's not no, Thursday. It's Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. At home against Murdoch. Senior uh, cap Captain Carly Smith has been getting her team ready, and they are excited for Thursday. The Lyman Stag football team had their first game on 9-8 against their biggest rival, Wilton. The game went into double overtime, and unfortunately, the Lions lost. The other record is 0-1 and looking forward on to Leicester. Captain senior Ryan Mott and Mike Flanagan, the kids, the, 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 cap, the seniors at Ryan Mott and Mike Flanagan. The kids at Tom to take pride in sports and they, and they play and always show the sportsmanship with it. The next big event is homecoming. It is on Saturday, the 23rd at 7 p.m. The Spirit Week days are Pajama Day, 16th Day, American Pride Day, Dress Nice Day, and the Color Wars. The student council members always put in a lot of work for everyone to have a good time. 
Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Yes. Yeah. Did you have any butterflies? Yeah. <laughs> Are they gone? Yeah. All right. Excellent. You did a great job. And thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, we like hearing about all those sports details. That's good. All right, good job. Yeah. Yes. Wait. Well, and I can like breathe. <laughs> and like, good job. Great. Um. Looks like we're waiting for CPAC. Jessica. Hi, I'm Jessica Meltzer from CPAC. I'm the borough and the co-president. I just have a few things. Our pie sale is starting tomorrow, so if you need pies for Thanksgiving, it's a good opportunity, and it's fundraising for our scholarship for May, or June, <laughs> sorry. Um, the square store is open online, and delivery is going to be November 9th. We're going to be at the open houses, or you can ask any of us, and I'm sure we're happy to help you order it. We're running our elections right now, uh, up for election are uh, me, <laughs> the Berlin co-president, our vice president, our secretary, and our treasurer. We're hoping people vote. Um, and our last thing is we're having a Meet the Experts night September 20th here at Toronto at 7 p.m. And we have a lot of really great teachers and staff members who come and talk to everybody about what they do, and we're really hoping to have a good turnout. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jessica. Ah, Berlin Link. I see nobody here. Well, she may still think it's the old 7 o'clock time. Okay, well, if, if she comes, yes, she said she was going we'll to give her that opportunity. This is Clisham, she said she was going to. Um, Jacqueline from the Wilson PTO. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I just wanted to come tonight to talk a little bit about the PTO. I was going to start with a review of the 2016-2017 year. Um, we did the magazine drive last fall that raised around $6,000 for the school. And we did the race for education, which raised 13000 And that was for the one-to-one -one initiative and purchased Chromebooks and a technology cart. This year, we have purchased a square and tablet for the PTO to use, so we now have capability to take credit and debit card purchases. Um, already we've hosted a popsicle party for the incoming kindergartners and parents on August 30th, and we hosted a Boohoo Yahoo breakfast for the kindergartners on their first day of school, and we provided bracelets to the parents and the children, and treat bags to the parents, which included tissues, hugs, and kisses. We gave um, the teachers and staff appreciation s'mores treats in their mailbox on the first day of school. That said, we appreciate you more than you know. <laughs> <laughs> and instead of doing the magazine drive this year, we've decided to do an indirect fundraising. So we have started a swag drive. And for a $45 sponsorship, you get a tote filled with either a car magnet and umbrella or a blanket and sunglasses. We're also taking $20 donations, and you'll receive a tote bag. Um, we are also hosting the talent show on November 17th, and that will be here at Toronto. And it's going to be a Hollywood theme with a red carpet. And we've decided to kind of promote this and get ads from local businesses and make it into a fundraiser. Parents will also be able to purchase ads to give the, a shout out to their child in the talent show. And there will be a raffle at the event, and we'll also be selling the swag bags there as well. Um, we have three assemblies already scheduled for this year. And there'll be two assemblies per event for K through two and three through five. The first one will be on November, I'm sorry, October 19th, and it's going to be with Holly Rock Entertainment, which is like a game show setup. And the questions will be a combination of health, fitness, anti-bullying, and academic. And each grade will get a chance to answer appropriate, grade appropriate questions and be involved in physical challenges. On January yeah, 11th, <laughs> uh, we're, we're going to be doing Johnny the K. And he is a former school teacher who cleverly and humorously educates and inspires character education through song, dialogue, and movement with audience participation and lots of excitement. Um, and it's designed to promote the principles of responsibility, respect, and cooperation. And then on May 17th, we are having Bubbleology, and 
that uses bubbles to explain liquid, solids, gases, geometry, tension, and pressure. And then we also have the family dance scheduled for March 2nd, and the children are going to be able to choose the theme and vote for the theme this year. And then the race for education will be on May 24th, and since it's our fifth anniversary of the race for education, we're going to do a call run. And the money that will be raised, we've allotted to go to the specials this year. And that pretty much sums up. It's a formidable list. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Um, she's oh, here. Okay. Hi. How are you? How are you? Very well. Would you like to talk about it? Sure. We just had our first meeting. Um, we voted and elected our board. We had a lot of members leave. Um, I can get the names. Or the secretary. Um, we just got a grant person who we haven't voted in yet, so we're excited that she stepped up to the plate. Um, we ordered and delivered agendas for the third, fourth, and fifth grade. We handed out notepads for parents for dismissal and if they're going to be picking up their children. We, we created a little pad that's easy for parents and we, um, we give it to the kindergarten and then we give it to new families that come in. Um, we ordered scholastic news and time for the school. We sent out letters to staff and teachers for startup funds, um, and we processed some of those requests. We're working on three grants that we'll need for the year. Um, we're in process of scheduling good company for our first cultural show, which will be in November. Um, it's a play that fosters diversity and acceptance, so we're excited to see how that one comes along, and it will have some student participation, which will be great. And they will work with Miss Denny um, to participate in the play, the children that are chosen. Um, we are donating money for flower pots for the front of the building. Uh, Julie Lee and Amanda Rogers have offered to do the planting generously. And we've scheduled our book fair for November 8th and 9th. We have not scheduled our STEM or science events or any other cultural events yet. So more to come. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Okay, Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Hi. Um, we have actually had two meetings. Um, we had a meeting prior to the sixth grade orientation, so we could uh, get organized to see how we could help out with that event. And a few of us attended um, to just kind of take names and. Um, inform parents about uh, access to the newsletter, uh, the online uh, newsletter, and let them know uh, that we're some of the uh, programs that we're working on. And we already have some new ideas about how to do that uh, differently and better next next year. Um, we have some events uh, happening. The senior breakfast will be coming up at the end of September. Uh, we started our annual giving campaign, which is um, donating. Um, However much a family can donate, there's no requirement to be a member, obviously, of the PTO. So um, we have received very generous donations from, from parents so far, and that will just kind of go throughout, mostly through the fall, but it can actually go through the entire year. So um, that's been going really well. Um, I spoke last night with the faculty to encourage um, faculty and staff uh, to request funds because we have funds to share and uh, wanted to make them all aware that the process is relatively easy and also um, if there was anything else that we could help um, communicate for them. For instance, we helped the nurse's office with uh, some supplies that she needed last year. Um, the big uh, focus right now has been trying to get a school store up and running. Uh, the benefits would uh, support not just the PTO, it would also be for the Booster Club. Tempo Student Council and also the Thurston Scholarship. So I've been working with Suzanne, who has the um, the Berlin store. You know, been very successful and and two Tanto children now. <laughs> yes. So we're working with a vendor. Um, met with Diane last uh, last week, and um, we have picked out numerous items, and I think it's going to you know appeal to the masses, parents and students, as well as uh, hopefully some staff and. Hope to have that online in a couple of weeks, and then also have items, physical items, to purchase at open house and also in the store, 
you know, possibly at lunch or some evening events upcoming, you know, through the first few months of the school year. Um, and I think that's about it. We, like I said, we had a really great turnout our second meeting. Uh, one of the members that has been around for a while said that they've never seen that many people show up. Uh, we had actually pull chairs into the room, so that's a really good sign. So, I'm hopeful. Good. Great. Christy's also here. She's my vice president. So, yeah. Thank you for both, kind of, both of you for coming. Thank you for your report. Thanks. Suzanne wants to add something. I do. We have a family shark and farm event we also scheduled for September 30th, so I forgot to mention that. But um, that's our annual kickoff. Um, for fun and yeah, just for fun to get the community together and <coughs> families can meet each other and just have fun. So um, that's a kind of thing. Okay. Thank you. Right. Do I ever look at anyone? Because I sometimes <coughs> get confused. Thank you. All right. I believe that it's your turn. Okay. So I'd like to combine great work. Um, the first thing we just wanted to put out another reminder about MASS, MASC conference. Um, I know Cliff is signed up to go, correct? That's correct. Um, but we don't have somebody from Boylston, so Cliff can vote for um, Berlin and for the region, I guess, but we have nobody for Boylston, so I just wanted to put it out there if anybody else is thinking of going to the conference. And I think a lot of times we don't have both both districts covered, so I think that's sometimes it's hard to find another person. Um, bus counts. We did look at the bus ridership. Um, we were happy to see Rob, uh, Bob did a quick count, and we had about 75 percent. We found that we had less kids at, on the Tahondo bus coming from Berlin than we did from Boylston. Um, so we're going to do a couple of quick checks throughout the year and keep an eye on that. Let's see how we're doing. Um, People personnel report, we have the coordinated program review dates. I think I told you uh, Deese is coming in this year to look through all of our reports. We're also coming to look at Carol's report. Um, she's going to have to do a Title I report this year similar to this. So for special ed and civil rights and ELL, they're coming in the week of uh, Martin Luther King Day, so that week right afterwards. Um, so they're going to meet with all of the principals and myself coming up, and we'll go through what um, they'll be looking for. Uh, I it's, think at that time they're going to want to meet with some of the school committee. If anybody's available, but closer to time, I'll talk to you about that and see who might be around. Um, and then uh, we, I did the special ed grants. Carol had a lovely format in her report, so I copied her, quite honestly. Um, but we thought it was... <laughs> We thought it was helpful for you to be able to see the difference in money that we receive in each of the districts um, in our grants. Um, it's a significant difference, and so sometimes that limits what we can do if we want to do things consistently across all three districts. Um, and I think that's probably about it. And Karen, you're going to be the point person for the coordinated review? Yes. Any other questions for Karen? Okay. Okay, Bob, you're up. Okay, so um, I have uh, a few items to report on. I'll start with the financial items. The first one is I just wanted to let you alert you to that um, attached in the, in the drive is the year-end financial reports for each of the three districts for your review. Um, wasn't planning to go through them in detail, but basically you can see what was budgeted, what was spent by, by line item. Um, this is something we provide uh, at the end of every fiscal year. The um, next item is uh, we have our region audit going on right now. They've uh, completed substantially all of their work. Um, there's a little bit of kind of last items they have to do to, to finish things up. They should be getting a draft report soon. Um, and if timing works out, I hope to have that to share at the next school committee meeting. Um, the, at the same time, we have, uh, we have an OPEB audit uh, going on, which is required. The requirement used to be every three years. It changed this year. We now, um, so we, we were due for one. We now will be required to do a full audit every year um, and a kind of a, what is called a roll forward audit every uh, other year. 
And the roll forward basically just takes the information you provided the previous year and updates it based on some more current assumptions, basically what your new health care costs are. It doesn't redo your population of uh, people that are enrolled. Um, so these are some expenses that we'll incur that we'll have to look at that we didn't budget for. We'll have to budget for those next year. Um, May I ask a question about that? Mm -hmm. So this isn't the roll forward year. This is an audit year. This is the audit year. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have a, a firm that was familiar with us that we engaged. Um, I've committed to use them for this year and next year to see how they do before we commit to do, uh, use them any further. Um, related to this, I also recommend that we budget as a separate line item uh, for the OPEP funding. Um, in the past, it's been bundled into retiree health insurance. I will plan to budget it beginning in FY19. I think that provides more visibility. Um, during the budget process, both to the public and to us to be aware of it. Um, what our approach has been to date, and I've actually talked to other institutions, is sometimes it's just uh, what you have left at the end of the year and you can afford to do, and it's not really planned. Um, we're in the early stages, we're in the third year of doing this. Um, so I think, I think budgeting this a separate line item will be helpful. Um, you know, and we can potentially use available funding as well, but at least to make a choice to, to budget for um, So that's something you, you will see in the budget this year. It won't be large, but it will at least be there as a start. Um, we also, I also have an update on the Tahanto Capital Project and um, related to that borrowing that we would need to do. So the Tahanto Capital Project is <coughs> a settlement of $300,000 from the design engineer firm for some claims we had for work performed on the project um, that happened several years ago. This was a long process, um, involved several people, and um, we are glad to have it behind us, I would say. Um, with the settlement, uh, what that means is we can now submit a final reimbursement uh, to MSBA. They hold back funds for their share of the grant. Um, they agreed to, I'm going to use an approximate number uh, now, but they agreed to fund approximately 50% of the project. They hold back 5% of that until you complete the project. So we're now able to request that funding, which is a million fifty-two thousand seven hundred twenty-three. Now, I don't know if we're going to get all that is subject to an audit, but that's what we're requesting. Um, we expect that that would be on the December 2017 MSBA board meeting. Um, what this means is that we will need to do short-term borrowing um, in November. That's when our current um, bond anticipation note expires. Um, there's, uh, there are some, we will need a s specifically, uh, a school committee will have to approve the winning bid, so I'm requesting that we uh, think about a meeting on November 9th, a separate meeting just for approval of the winning ban um, that's needed before they can generate the paperwork um, for the bond. Um, and then a few days later, we'll actually need signatures from the school committee chair, secretary, and district treasurer, which does not need to be an open meeting. Um, Last year, I've, I've asked them to, uh, these dates I'm more comfortable with when we did this last year. I would say I was a little bit uncomfortable with the kind of the rushed timeline that we had. Um, and uh, I think this will put us in a better position to, um, in case something happens or somebody's not available to, to be able to react. Um, I don't know if there's any questions on that. I've kind of given a high level view of the ban, otherwise I'll keep going on. Um, for transportation update, um, we have uh, the routes are stabilizing. We have some remaining requests I'm, I'm reviewing and responding to from parents. I got through, I'd say, substantially all of them. There are kind of a handful left um, that I've asked uh, North Reading Transportation to review. Um, so I'll getting back to, be getting back to those parents by the end of the week. Um, and then at that point, once any changes are made, we'll repost the routes on the website. I think the routes that are up there now are a little bit they're from the beginning of the year. We've had some changes since then. Um, the last update will be short, the wood pellet boiler update. Uh, just to say it's, it's scheduled to be online uh, late, mid to late next week. Um, this is kind of punch list items that they're working on. And uh, our facilities manager, I just spoke to him this afternoon, said they're basically targeting the end of next week. Um, and he will provide a more comprehensive update for the October meeting on, and explain it in a little bit more detail um, than I can do. So that's, those are uh, my items. And that last item is certainly a good thing to hear. It's been a long journey. It has. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, questions about? about any of the items? So this is oh. How many bids are you getting, Olivia? For the for the bond anticipation note? Yeah. Uh, it goes out. It's, we have a firm that it, that um, runs the process for us. I believe last time there was at least three, if not four, but it could, basically goes published publicly, and there could be multiple. Um, but based on the last one, I think it was three or four. And we, they do all the calculations. There's multiple ways, uh, multiple pieces. They, they provide a premium, they provide an interest rate, and they basically calculate what's the lowest cost of borrowing for us. It's uh, a little bit more complicated than, than just the interest rate. Um, so I'm hoping that we have you know three to four at least. And then this is to get us through the next six months. It'll be a six month term. And then we'll have a permanent bond or kind of more of long term financing. And uh, that will be probably near the end of the year. Okay, good. Um, Bob has asked us to um, add to our meeting calendar a meeting on the 9th. Um, I don't know, do we need to take a formal vote to add that? I don't think so. Calendar, I wouldn't think so. No, I wouldn't think so. So, once anyone objects, we will um, add that to our calendar. Whoever's in charge of the calendar. <laughs> and I think Bob was thinking it would be a single issue to come in and vote on that particular mm -hmm. item. Yes. And that's it. So, very short, hopefully. On and what's the date again? November 9th. No, is so, that the date you were asking for? November 9th is the date. The treasurer, who is our finance person for the region, basically the treasurer for the region, will be there at the meeting as well to kind of walk us through the process. And I'm the secretary, right, for the regional? Correct. So you'll be so do I need to sign it? Because I won't be here. But well, we can you don't have to sign it that night. Are you away on vacation? Yeah. Oh. That's why I can't make MASC this year. So as long as we have a quorum, right? right. No, we need, uh, I think we need, but I, I will look actually for the school committee meeting on the 9th. My understanding is we don't need you. On the 14th, we do. should be back with us. Okay. <laughs> I can confirm that. I don't think this is, I can confirm that. Okay. If you, if you can get confirmation on that, we can certainly address that at the next meeting. Okay. But for now, we're looking for the 9th and the 14th. Back. And it's the ninth, six thirty. Yes, it can be. Uh, uh, yeah, we've been meeting at six thirty, so to be consistent. Okay. Any other questions for Bob? All right. Who is next? Let me see. It looks like our director of curriculum and events. So included in my report, as Karen mentioned, is the update on grants we've received to date and also grants that are still out there we're waiting to hear back from. I wanted to bring your attention to the grant called the Efficiency and Regionalization Grant. Superintendent Ekstrom had asked me to bring this forward to school committee for this particular meeting for consideration. This is a grant we looked at last year, and it's a grant that would support any types of um, funding costs incurred in terms of exploring regionalization and moving forward toward that process. We looked at it last year. It's under the Community Compact Grant. There were two dates, if you remember, last year. One was the fall and one was the spring date. This time, they're only offering an opening date in October 16th and closing on November 16th. So we have a very short window if that's a need. It does run as it did last year with the need to have signatures from um, leaders and from the municipalities. So, this is for your consideration. I, consideration, I know you have a meeting, I think, coming up shortly. Yeah. The difficulty with this is the same difficulty we had last time. The process is just not quite at that point where we could expect the select boards to sign on mm -hmm. on this. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a concern. But we can bring it up at Thursday night's meeting. And, yeah. and also to think about what you would use that money for would, would be the other piece. Yeah. I wanted to make you aware of it, and um, perhaps I'll offer it again next year if we're ready for that. But it, What's the amount? 
It doesn't say specifically what the amount. It, it's up to two hundred thousand dollars is available, but I'm sure that they uh, would not award us that much. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't think it would be a large sum. I'm going to say I think we went last year for up to twenty thousand. We're looking at. That. I think we're thinking legal fees and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to leave the fidelity investments and carry school community to the principals to talk about. Oh, she's so. <laughs> the caring school community and fidelity investments with the principals can help us and talk about those are our social curriculum that we just launched and fidelity investment program coming Now, do you want to do that now? Or do you want to turn it <laughs> Or we can go through. I can recover from the shock of that little gift from the curriculum director. <laughs> I think there's somebody before us. So we can wait. You can wait okay. to, your, to, your, I, I can pay to your regular report? We're very patient. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you all set, Karen? Yes, thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, Paul McLaura, technology. Um, again, good evening. Um, you have my report. Um, again, a uh, list of some of the things we did over the summer. Um, again, not meant to be all inclusive, just to give you some highlights of some of the things that we did. Um, again, um, updating over 650 machines, um, updating um, the, the first item talks about updating images, and uh, that's basically keeping. Um, all the computers um, up to date, so we're not running on um, older versions of Windows or older versions of the browsers. And, um, so and then pushing those out to all um, the various machines. Um, we want to highlight also, um, we completed the uh, wireless project, again that was $123,000 uh, grant, most of which um, was federal and state money, very little cost to the district. Um, that project um, include improvements to um, Berlin's wiring infrastructure as well. So um, Berlin was the oldest of the buildings, even though it was just slightly before Boylston. So the uh, internal wiring um, received an upgrade as well. Um, and again, I think the other main piece I, I wanted to, again, is, is thank uh, Dave McCarthy. Um, Dave, um, if it weren't for Dave, um, half of that list or more would not be done, and it's also always done in a very thorough and professional manner, so there aren't mistakes made, and it's not work done to get work done, it's, it's work always well done with Dave. And again, I also want to thank um, the team, because they're always very supportive of Dave and I um, trying to get things done, and even though it's not always um, easy in the summer, because we're working around programs or empty buildings or half empty buildings or when they might want to get something done and we're shutting things down. Um, so I want to thank the, the rest of the leadership team for putting up with our, um, all the work that we get done with us on. I have a question. Uh, the swipe access cards, is that for the external doors or is it for classroom doors? What are those? Where Predominantly are those? external doors. Okay. There will be at some point some of the internal doors so we can um, section off parts of the building. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, it's we've, it, the focus has been um, external door. Okay. Any other questions for Paul? First blush, it was a long list. You said it was the highlights. That's, yeah. that's okay. We won't talk about the day-to-day -day stuff. That's <laughs> Yeah. Well, maybe an anecdote once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul. You will. Um, let's see, Mr. Campbell. I believe you're next. It is, it is indeed my turn. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for your time. You've got my report. Um, I wanted to focus on um, just a couple of things quickly in this, and then Carol gave me a little gift, we'll do that. Um, but before that, I wanted to just echo Paul's comment about uh, Dave, who's just um, an amazing guy. He is constantly present, he's constantly doing things. 
Um, he's a huge asset, and he's invisible. No one ever sees the guy because he's constantly in motion. So, until the day thing, he's just a great man. Um, open house for Berlin Memorial Schools tomorrow. Everybody is welcome. Um, the event starts at six. People are going directly to classes, but we're doing a lot of other things as well. We'll have representatives from the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts there. We'll have a representative from Clinton Savings Bank talking about student saving accounts. And uh, CPAC, my friends from CPAC, will be there to trick me into buying pies that I clearly don't need. <laughs> uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Is there, um, what's the cause? Well, we have samples, too. Samples. <laughs> Nobody's my <laughs> favorite. <laughs> Um, so we're looking forward to all that. Link is always, you know, a presence in our school, so we're grateful for that. Um, so I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Um, somebody talked about the pellet stove, so we can skip over that. Um, but it's been a great start to the school year, and I'm really pleased. The teachers have, you know, when, the, when we don't have the summer school program and the building is quiet, you really notice the presence of teachers who come in and out throughout the course of the summer. They, are really a remarkable group of people coming in, getting their classroom set up, um, going that extra mile so that everything's perfect on the first day. Um, so I'm, I'm very, very proud to work with all of them. I'm taking the Fidelity program um, that Carol has just mentioned. We um, in Berlin have a peer, her name is Jackie Marshall. She works for Fidelity Investments. She actually approached uh, me last spring. They were interested in doing um, financial education at the elementary level for kids. Um, it's something that they've seen and kind of identified as a concern kind of nationally. They're a national company and they're kind of piloting this education program and they wanted to make our district, because Jackie lives here, um, kind of a pilot. Let's see what we can do with uh, some of our elementary school students. And we quickly brought in our good friends in Boylston um, to, share the, to share the wealth and to share the experience. Um, so they will be starting next week with our fifth grade students. They'll be coming in once a week to talk about financial literacy. Uh, they'll be talking about income and budgets and savings and checking and interest rates and the kinds of things that kids aren't ordinarily exposed to. Um, what's nice for us in addition to just the information kids will get, that background knowledge that they'll start to develop, is that it also ties into language arts and it ties into mathematics and it ties into civics because those are all parts of that program. The program that they've got was developed by people who do financial literacy education for a living. So they've actually given us the program aligned to our state standards. So we're, they've done a tremendous amount of planning and cost us nothing. Um, and we're super excited to have it happen. Um, and as that goes along, I'll keep you all posted. Um, maybe at some point we can check and come in and, and kind of talk about how that's going. So if anybody has any questions about any of that. Any questions for John? That's what Fidelity Investments Program sounds really promising. Yeah, yeah. That's a great One of those great gifts opportunity. Of Okay. Thank you, John. Mr. Thompson. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, you have my report as well, and you'll see a lot of similarities. Uh, we have <laughs> similar experiences in the two elementary schools by design. Uh, we had a wonderful opening of school. Uh, you know, I always say the most important thing, get them in, get them fed, get them home. And if you have some smiles along the way, then that's just bonus, and that's what we had. So it was a, a great start to the year. I, Hats off to all the teachers who helped prepare and um, to Michelle Adam who keeps the whole thing running, really does. Um, our open house is scheduled for September 19th at 6 o'clock. We also have a host of community members that come in and, and share their things as well. Of course, the parents' main priority is get, getting into the classrooms, meeting the teachers, seeing where their kids spend their entire day. Um, this year, we've been, I've been working with the police and fire chief. They'll be, we'll be filming a short presentation, uh, an idea that I borrowed from John, or stall. Um, a short presentation for parents just how to handle an emergency situation in the school, and we'll start um, our session with that while we have a captive audience in the classrooms, because <laughs> try to get all the parents into the gym 
and they don't really want to go. <laughs> so, um, one of the other things I wanted to share, as we presented last week on, or last month on our um, strategic plan, you'll notice one of the focuses was on that civic responsibility. And you know, we've, we see that there's an opportunity right now. One of my teachers, Beth Ann DeFonso, came to me and really wanted to help out the, the victims from um, Hurricane Harvey down in Texas. So we've started a, a drive. We've adopted a first grade and a fifth grade classroom out in Houston, and we're sending school supplies because they did not have the first day of school that we did up here. And they're still, they're still recovering. And I know we're, we're keeping Florida in our thoughts right now as, as they're kind of struggling through some things as well. I feel like it's a great opportunity. It's really important to show kids that they can make an impact and, you know, and it can be all the way across the country and there are kids just like them that, that need help and they can do something about it. So I think it's a, it's a great message for kids to, to have. Um, we have begun the beginning of the year assessments. It's a, uh, you know, Kids love it. They come to school. We get them in their routines, and then we start testing them. But <laughs> it's uh, it's really important information that we gather. It, it sets the tone for the teachers. It allows them to to plan to make sure that everybody's getting what they need. The, the students that are that came in accelerated or are being challenged, and those kids that showed some regression, we're we're addressing right away. Um, I want to thank Carol for my gift. <laughs> Um, caring school community, you'll also see that ties in really well with our strategic plan. Um, last year, Carol led a, a committee of parents, teachers, stakeholders from across the district in, um, in determining the appropriate curriculum for us. We did end up finalizing on caring school community, which has a meeting model component to it, and it really focuses on um, giving kids authentic opportunities to solve problems themselves and, and kind of helps teachers facilitate those conversations. The first few, first eight weeks, there's two sessions a week where they kind of set the, the ground rules for what those meetings look like and they, and they do some of the foundational work and then those meetings continue throughout the rest of the year to address issues as they arise. Um, I'm really excited about the program. The teachers are really excited about it. I have to say one of the things that uh, we spent a lot of time this summer and even as we're gearing in and when we're talking about the strategic plan is we have this great curriculum let's not just kind of push it out there and say okay guys figure it out so uh, we've already had a professional development day the first half day we had all of the staff in the elementary school and that was paraprofessionals that was specialist everyone was there to to get the the start of that program and we've committed to to periodically throughout the year using staff meeting time to, to make sure that teachers have an opportunity to talk about what's working, what their concerns are, problems solved together, and, uh, and we also have some other professional development opportunities down the road to make sure that we are supporting the program as it, as it goes through the year. Did I talk enough? <laughs> Any questions? Okay, thank you very much. Excellent. Diane. Hi. Good evening. Hello. Um, so as my student representative had stated that um, we welcomed 611 students on the first day of school that included 97 sixth graders as well as 40 um, new students who um, throughout the summer were either move-ins to one of the two towns um, or coming back to us from private schools, um, vocational schools, as well as um, some students who have been previously homeschooled um, are now um, joining us. So we're very happy to, to welcome all of those students. As with the elementary schools, we began our benchmark assessments um, over this past week, week and a half, which included not only the district determined measures in the content areas, but also um, our math testing. And, and Sally has been um, leading that with our students in grades six, seven, and eight. I believe seventh grade is finishing up yes. their testing. Um, professional development on September 1st. Um, over the summer, we had um, the last part of our um, Tahanto PBIS training, which we are calling DEER, um, which is um, a tie-in from 
um, our core values and beliefs of determination, education, enrichment, and responsibility. And um, this initiative um, over the summer was the second part. We spent three days of training um, last year between the winter and spring, and we finished up the summer with the training of the leadership team. Um, and the leadership team on September 1st met with all of the middle school faculty um, and staff and presented um, the focus for the year um, for our initiative. And that focus is really um, teaching students about expectations of um, behavior in our hallways as well as our cafeterias. Those are two of our main focus areas that through um, looking at data of referrals um, that we get in the main office, those were the areas of our focus. So um, leadership team has done an incredible job um, and are now going to be using advisory time to begin actual lessons uh, with those expectations um, for all of our middle school students as well. On the opening day of school, Sally and I, I also introduced it to the high school because um, our second lunch, students from the middle school and high school share time as well. And plus, you know, walking through um, the hallways um, so they are aware of sort of what expectations are of um, our middle school students. Also on the professional development day, our high school um, Teachers worked on the development of curriculum, um, but also they met with um, special education staff to ensure that IEPs and 504s, um, all that information was given to um, and got over with all their teacher, our teachers so that we could make sure the first day um, we were up and running and providing the services that we needed to provide. And then lastly, I'm happy to report that our new traffic pattern <laughs> Um, has proven to be successful. A couple reminders need to be given, but um, in meeting with the police chief, uh, we're happy to report that there is absolutely no backup on Route 70, um, either in uh, the morning or in the afternoon during pickup. Um, and it's also nice to have all of our students entering through the front of the building, one central location. Thanks. Hey, Sam, any questions? Right. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to um, thank all of the leaders of this school system for everything that you've done to start a school year that appears to be very successfully taking off. And um, in your reports this evening are very encouraging and um, you should take great pride in what you've accomplished. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Angela, you're on. I am? Business items? Yes. Okay, so the Berlin School Committee, the first thing we need to do is vote a delegate for our MASC, um, M-A-S-C, M-A-S-S Joint Conference. And so, um, Cliff, as we know, is going, so do I have a motion to appoint Cliff as our, I should probably explain what happens. At this conference, there are some, uh, what are they called? Yeah. References there. Initiatives. What do they call those things that we vote on at the um, conference? Yeah, I'm not well, they're kind of, uh, they're, they're kind of priorities. They're priorities that the, state school committees kind of associated that will be their priority for the following year. And so in this delegate assembly, every school committee has one delegate, and that delegate will vote yay or nay on these each of these priorities as they're read and discussed. And uh, the delegates have a chance to get up and speak on them if they like. So that's what we're talking about. So, um, and Cliff, if he's voted in for Berlin and also voted in for the region, he'll actually have two votes and actually have to raise both hands. <laughs> <laughs> you did once yeah. before. So that, yeah, that's kind of how, what we're talking about tonight. Okay? So do I have a motion to appoint Cliff to be the Berlin School Committee Delegate at the November conference? I'll make a motion that we nominate Cliff okay. as our delegate. 
Awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thanks. Um, next, we wanted to schedule uh, the building walkthrough. Um, and I don't know what's good. And you said the boiler is going to be done next week, supposedly. We look to you, John, for guidance. Yeah. Oh, I um, I will say this: Tuesday nights for me are the best nights that I'm at your disposal. Did you say Tuesday nights? Mm -hmm. They're fine nights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime after four. Anytime after four. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, but it, you know, I think probably your schedules are harder to coordinate than mine. Um, Kids go home at three fifteen. I have an evening commitment in Boston, so as long as it was four or five, I'd be all right. Which date are we talking about? September nineteenth. Um. Can we do it in October? Sure. Mm. Is that worse? Yeah. Same. Only because of the search process. Oh, okay. We okay, let's keep it. Six Sorry. Nights <laughs> for that. Um, so, I truly am young. Yeah, if you want a different day. If you what, can, what about Tuesday for you? Okay. What Tuesdays for you at? Tuesdays, generally um, speaking. Okay, Tuesday would be fine for me. Which one? Oh, which, what yeah, date? Right. What well, would be the earliest day? Um, well, at this time, the earliest Tuesday for me, uh, that would be um, Tuesday, uh, probably the 26th would be the, well, no, actually the 3rd. I'm sorry, the 3rd. October, October the 3rd would be the soonest. Tuesday, I think. And we have a truck, we have a, hmm, do we have a meeting on the 3rd already? Yes, I think we did. Yes, we did. Um, what about the morning? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, can we do morning? Yeah, any morning. What long. morning is good for you? That would can be morning. Tuesday morning? Tuesday morning. Well, any day. Any day, any day, any day, any day. We, we go on mornings. Okay, well, is, it, that's going to be. Is that going to be a one-time? Yeah, one-time thing. Yeah. Okay, one-time thing. I can do. I can take off the third. On the third. I can take off October the third. October the third. Is that good for you? In the morning, I can do that. I can. I put you in. You know, you wanted to avoid October. Well, it's okay. Yeah. It's in the morning. What's a good time for? Um, let's let the kids get in and settle at 9.15. October 3rd, 9.15, does that work? October Can we do 3rd. 9 o'clock? 9 o'clock, sure. 9 o'clock? 9 o'clock? Yeah. Yeah, October 3rd, 9 o'clock. Perfect. Perfect. Right here. Right, thank you. No, at the elementary school. At the elementary school, okay. Could, the, uh, yeah. could we see if the facility sky could be there too? Maybe. I can ask, I can ask yes. Steve. Yep. Good, good suggestion, Angela. Okay, that's it for Berlin. You want to see that boil up cranking, don't you? Yes, we do. <laughs> All about it. Okay, um, the Boylston School Committee, I believe, has some business to do. Yeah. Student teachers. Student teacher books. I believe that was, that was an happy lay down, but I believe that was the um, information mm -hmm. on the student nurses that are coming to work with Payne. Did you get that in your packet? I looked. I didn't see it. I could be. I don't see it on the drive. But I'm. Do my name? Yes. I don't think the. Are you talking about the student teachers? It, 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 as it relates to the nurse facility, we did see that before. They could at what meeting. Well, it couldn't have been the last one because I wasn't here, so it would have to be prior to that. Um, if I may. 
Angela wanted, you wanted to vote on the, to approve the um, description from the last meeting that Berlin didn't vote on. For the, for the student nurse? What description is that? Good job. meeting. <laughs> so Boyle, the Boylston is just, it's the nurses that come in every year and do some of the routine screenings with Fane. They work with her um, from Mass College of Pharmacy, I believe it is. And they come in and they run um, some of the height and weight and all of those screenings, vision screenings with her um, under the direction of their, one of their professors. Do you need a vote? sooner rather than the next meeting? I think we do, right? Yeah. So I think we just need approval to let them um, to work with the thing. When, I don't want to be nitpicky, when we typically approve student teachers, there's a form? Right, there was a packet of forms. This, as I said, this was added late, but I'm not seeing the packet here. Um, of all the student forms, they've all been quarry checked. Um, and I'm not sure why that's not in there. Would you prefer to wait until you've seen that? I think I have it in an electronic copy if you want me to mail it to you right now. Okay. Let me just... Is this stay cold? It doesn't look like it. No, these are individual ones for each screen. Oh, they're on there? Oh, so it's in your pack. That's okay. <laughs> Do you have it or do you want me to email it? Oh, okay, I see what it So it's the one that looks like this on top. That's why I wasn't finding it. Well, we don't have that. You don't have the paper one, but I mean, it's in the file. I, I'm not seeing it, but... I want to come back to that later in the meeting. But we'll pass over it. But it sounds like you need it. We do. They've, done, they've all been quarry checked and all have filled out the forms. So we have them all here. I can certainly pass them out. They're not in the electronic folder either. I, I know Cheryl added this in late, so maybe that was just a mistake that we didn't get it all. But I can certainly pass the packet around if you want to take a look at it. And I did just email you guys a. a scanned copy of Great. them. I, I didn't have your BBRSD account in there, so I think it went to your Gmail. Um. You, got it. you want a moment to look at it? What's your pleasure, Chair? Well, since the, uh, the school system needs this approval so they can move forward with the program. Okay. But I don't chair the Boylston School Committee. <laughs> it's just Boylston? It's need just Boylston. Just okay. So I move that we approve <laughs> the student teachers to work with Fane Sullivan. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Did you get that, Deborah? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Boylston. Um, next on my list, I'm working with three different agendas here. And I, try, I keep getting lost. But, um, <laughs> I believe for the, it's the regional committee, and we need to do an execution of the agreement between the Berlin Boston Regional School District and the Tahanto Regional Teachers Association that um, covers the period September 1st, 2017 to August 3rd, 
2012. 2020. 2020. Great. Um, what's involved in the execution? My understanding is that it's already been signed by the uh, union and it just needs to be signed by the chair, I believe. We looked at this this afternoon. I apologize. I forget who needed to sign this. Um, no, it's the whole committee. Everybody needs to sign it. So there's two copies. Okay. All right. That's so these two copies of the contract will be passed around, and everyone is asked to sign it. Can we do that at the end of the meeting? Is there a required vote or anything, or did we already vote to approve it? My understanding is you've already voted in this. Yeah, is just the two sessions ago, I think we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's been kicking around for a while. There's some mm -hmm. formatting. Yeah. And... Okay. All right. Um, now we need to select a delegate for the MASC and MASS joint conference. I need a motion. I motion that we appoint Cliff as our delegate for the region. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any no's? I'm glad you're going, Cliff. Thank you. Glad to go. Lori, you're up next. I am. I actually have a handout. What's coming around is a newsletter for the Regionalization Exploratory Committee. Um, it's our, this has been kicking around for a little while, too, and I think as of tonight, I think we're hopefully finalized. If you do see something egregious, let me know and we'll certainly fix it. Um, these will be going out via school messenger. Thank you, principals, for offering to do that. And, um, we will also be looking for other ways to convey this, to put it on Rowan's Facebook page, to share social media and that kind of thing. The approach of the subcommittee was to keep this very kind of brief and kind of, um, there are no definitive answers at this point. What we really wanted to do was share a little bit of a glimpse of what the committee's doing and what we're concerned about um, and what kinds of questions we're analyzing. So we thought for this first one, the governance issue would be a good one for people to see what the law says, the various options for school committee selection under a regionalized agreement, and then of those options, what direction this school committee is leaning in or advising. But we're also seeking feedback from the community on that. Um, I do have one request. I received an email from one of the attendees of the subcommittee who is a Berlin teacher. I thought there were two Berlin teachers kind of um, filling in for each other. They've indicated to me they're both interested in serving on the subcommittee. I, my personal feeling is if they want to be there, I really want them there. Um, and if it comes down to a need to vote, I think they'd be willing to split a vote so that it's not creating any kind of imbalance. We also could offer Boylston the same opportunity if there were two teachers from Boylston that wanted to attend. But I think having folks who want to be in this discussion is really positive. So I, we do need, Cliff, for you to appoint Betsy Trudeau from BMS to the Exploratory Subcommittee. Molly Ling Jalier is already on it, um, but she and Betsy both would like to serve. Um, do you have the spelling of the name? Yes. T R U D E A U. D E T S Y. Mm -hmm. Well, then, if that's the recommendation of the committee, then I'm a pointer to the committee. Great. Thank you. 
The next meeting of this group is this Thursday at 7.15 here in this room. At our last meeting, one of the agenda items was we asked for volunteers to make some calls to other districts as part of our research. And I, um, a couple of people, Nadine and um, Mike DeBool, got together ahead of time and did some questions so that everybody could sort of come at it asking the same questions. The thought we had at the time was that we'd bring those questions back to the full committee. But this is a high-performing committee. So one of the folks has already done her research, and it's phenomenal. It is such interesting information. Um, Hamira shared an, an, her materials from talking with the superintendent at Chatham. Is it called Manamoy? What is, is that right, Don? Monomoy. Um, but that person, I guess, had already been also involved in Lincoln Sudbury in regionalization efforts. So there was a tremendous amount of perspective. They shared their regional agreement as well. So, and we have a number of other folks who are also going to be completing similar assignments. So that's incredibly helpful information for us. The last item I have is we had committed at our last meeting to have people from the exploratory group cover each of the open houses. I'm planning on going to Berlin tomorrow, but I'm going to be late. And I'm wondering, is someone else from the exploratory committee? Are you? I, I can go, but I can be there at the beginning. OK, and then we'll switch off. Sounds good. OK. And my thought is I'll bring hard copies of the newsletter that we can hand out. How will I get them? How will I get them? Um, um, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, so we can send it to me. Yeah, do you want to print I'll some print out? Them. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you have a color printer? I do indeed. Okay. And it works. <laughs> All right, I'll do that. Um, I also it's going out on messenger. We don't need a bunch. Just right. Just I mean, I think if people haven't seen it yet, or I, I think it's good to have a few. Um, BES is September nineteenth. And I'm hoping Matt's going to be. I cannot do that one at all. I can so. be there early. Okay. I will be there early anyways, right? That's the schedule yeah. walk through. Yep, correct. Okay. And then Tahanto is October 5th. Same, and I sorry, same, same plan for the printing of the... Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Send it my way. Okay. Cool. Great. Diane, I'll bring some. <laughs> okay. Well, would you like us to um, send these out to school messenger? Okay, school messenger. I... There have been two or three versions floating around, so I just tried to delete those and put the latest version in the drive, in the Google Drive. Mm -hmm. Why don't I email it to you so there's no question on anybody's part. I'll email the final tomorrow to all three of you. And Karen, I'll send it to you and Cheryl, just so that we're all clear which one is the final. Bob actually made a great suggestion today that I was able to incorporate. Um, and I also added in, um, actually, maybe not. The version that's on the drive has Molly and Betsy. The version you're looking at just has Molly on the thing, so we'll send out the new one. So is yet another version? Well, the version that has that is in the Google Drive. Okay. It's just what was printed earlier came out without it. It looks great. You did a nice job. So do you want it to come out and go out by messenger this week? Yes. Like maybe Friday yeah. we'll send it out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll coordinate the time. Yeah. Sure. And Ken, I'll send you a newer version. I think that's all I have. Bob is working very, very hard on financial scenarios and modeling and we're looking at that. I think it's going to take us a little while. I don't think we're going to be ready this Thursday to talk a lot about scenarios. Um, 
but there's some really good work being done, and we're hopeful that we can get some expert advice as well. More work to do. We'll get there. That's it. As always, the committee is doing excellent work. It's Thank a really you so good much. Committee. Thank you, all the members of the committee. Um, I'm going to take the privilege of the chair to adjust the order of the business items. Uh, I would like to do the appointing of the superintendent search screen committee and then move after that to the superintendent search so that Dorothy can do a presentation because the appointment is very fast and simple thing. <coughs> So, um, committee members, we've had a tremendous, generous response towards um, working on the screening committee. Um, we have managed to find all the people we need for all of the slots, even though they've all gotten a letter afterwards telling them what it means they're going to have to do. Um, no one just runs screening in the room. So that's a good thing. Um, <coughs> So uh, tonight I would just like to uh, point the following people to the superintendent's screening committee. We have three parents, first of all. If I mispronounce anyone's name, I apologize in advance. Um, we have Tracy Freitas from BMS, Lori Hart from BES, and we have Jay Rocha from Toronto. Um, we have three teachers. Uh, we have Deborah. I should have had this. Louise. All right, from BMS. Tara Koziak from BES. And Natalie Adams from Tahanto. Our principal representative will be Diane Tusseri from Tahanto. Our central office administrator will be Karen Molnar, PPS director and interim superintendent. We have two community representatives um, appointed by um, the select boards in each town. Christine Keefe will be representing Berlin, and Michael May will be representing Boston. And the two school committee members are myself and Jim Spencer. And so I appoint all of these people to the committee and thank them in advance for the generosity and the hard work they're going to put into this process. I'm very encouraged by the response we received um, and grateful. All right. Next, we want to talk about the superintendent search door. Yes. Would you like me? We are allowed. Would you come up there? Since we have a chair there already. <laughs> There are a couple things I'd like to go over with you tonight. Um, one is just to give you a couple quick updates on the search for a permanent superintendent. Uh, I brought, unfortunately, I'm not sure enough copies of the brochure that was printed and is circulating. Um, we are getting applications. Um, I never like to tell you how many we have because I can guarantee you that we'll double, triple, quadruple and be a good number the last few days of, before the deadline. Um, I did notice that there have been 108 responses to the survey, and they almost all came on the same day, um, which says to me that was the day that people knew there was the survey online. So you might want to put out another reminder that the survey is out there. Usually every time there's a reminder, there's an uptick in the number of surveys that are completed. May I interrupt? Is there any way the principals at their open houses? Because we only have to September 8th. I mean, When's the survey? Uh, let's see, the survey. Did um, we pass the deadline already? No, 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 it's still open. Um, but what, actually, it wasn't going to close Friday, but we could leave it open a little longer if you wanted to. All right. So, principals, if you can <coughs> nudge people and remind them, that'd be great. Uh, and then the other thing I believe we wanted to talk about tonight was an interim superintendent. Yes. So just very in a broad overview, and I'll answer any questions you have, there are three options. One would be to use, um, to 
take advantage of internal people who would be willing to step into the role for a while. The other is to have someone come in who's essentially a retired superintendent who could fill in the role uh, temporarily. Or the third option would be someone who would be interested eventually in being considered for the permanent position. So someone who, would be, who is not working right now and would be eligible to step into that role if, if they were selected. Um, I have um, talked to several different people and there are three people who have expressed interest as external people to fill the position. Um, the first one is Joe Conley, uh, who I believe has uh, been an interim superintendent here in the past and an interim business manager in one of the communities. Um, Joe said he really enjoyed his time here. He'd be happy to come back and help. He does have an obligation one day a week on Thursdays. He's mentoring a business manager in another district. So he would be able to be here four days a week. Um, Patty Grenier is another retired superintendent. Um, well experienced. She, uh, I think she retired in 2011. Um, she has continued to be active working on the new superintendent induction program. So it's not like she retired in 2011 and she's rusty over the past six years. Um, she said she would be happy to help. She said she already has a planned vacation in mid to late October. So that, she said the vacation is about 10 days for some of those days or weekends. So she would, there would be a time when she couldn't be here. Um, and the other person is Dr. Glenn Brandt, who is, um, was formerly the superintendent in Acton Boxborough and is someone who is not working as a superintendent right now, not retired, and maybe someone who would be interested in stepping into the permanent position. Um, I have copies of resumes. I think you had copies given to you in your packet already. I have extra copies if you want them. Um, so, uh, so I guess you have a decision of if you want to go the route of having someone outside come in, um, that or stick with the, the person who's your acting superintendent as the inside person. Um, and then I would suggest maybe you want to have these people come in for an interview so you can get to know them a little bit and, and decide your course of action. All right, committee members. What are your thoughts? I, I will share that I had envisioned a process where we would hopefully have a number of people who would express interest in the position and we would then <clears throat> perhaps have a, a subgroup that would look through those, um, select a couple mm -hmm, and start. have them um, come and be interviewed publicly at the school you could certainly do that um, if you wanted to bring the three down to two, or you could have all three come out. Hey. From a uh, timeline perspective, just an understanding of timeline, we're, <clears throat> we're talking about the time frame between now, for lack of better terms, and November 1st? Hopefully November 1st, uh, that we sort of had November or, 1st. Or start date of or so higher. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think our discussion was that November 1st might be a little unrealistic for a start date for the permanent superintendent, that the search would be completed around that time, but it would, by January, around the January 1st start date was a little bit more realistic. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a little confused, and I'm okay. sorry, I might have missed something along the way. Um, is there, Karen, is Karen unable or uninterested in serving in the interim role until November 1st or December or whatever? Is there a prohibition for you in doing that? Somehow? I think there's just a lot of options. It's whether you choose to put in somebody who's full-time for the superintendent while we're looking for someone. My understanding is that it's going to be beyond the search process. There's probably going to be somebody who's already a sitting superintendent, and we're talking about maybe another 120 days notice that they have to give until they come here. So I think we're willing to do whatever the committee wants. I think she's just giving us options at this point. So I, the timing I can understand. Um, if from a point of view of disruption, it feels disruptive to me to have an interim and then 
spend energy and time figuring out who another interim could be mm -hmm. at the same time we're trying to recruit for the permanent unless all three of those interims were potentially candidates for the well, of which you said Juan was? I, think, I agree with you 100%. I think the challenge that we were faced with was the fast change of Nadine's choice to when she was going to leave, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's what has created sort of the, the mm -hmm. challenge that we're in, right? I was going to suggest if, you know, I would lean towards, um, and I wasn't going to put Karen on the spot, but I would lean towards <clears throat> the less disruption as well. But I didn't want to put Karen on the spot in terms of in the meeting as having to have that discussion. So I think, in my opinion, <laughs> but I, I had no problem doing that. <laughs> <it. laughs> Sorry, Karen. <laughs> in my, I was, you know, I, in my opinion, I was going to agree with you that option one seemed like a, a good choice for everybody as it relates to getting to the next point. The only, and then the other thing I was going to add is um, with the candidate who is. Um, interested in the long-term position, I would like to, in my personal opinion, I would want to interview that person as a long-term position, not as an interim move to long-term position. And if we didn't, if Karen did not decide to stay on, I would lean more towards one of the two folks who are going into it as being an interim and understanding that process, which would allow us to, I think it would be hard to interview for a permanent superintendent while we have one who's in the position in the for the position. I just don't think that's the right way to go about it. That would be my and I was wondering if it wouldn't be less disruptive to get an interim superintendent who was interested in the long term. Because then that would seem to me to be doing a couple you know, taking care of one thing while taking care of another. You know and making it more of a smooth transition. I was picturing that as a smoother transition. That's all. I, I thought so, the option so, through was... So, Dorothy, what's... Well, that, I mean, that would depend on if that, I mean, you... So you have one person who would be an interim and perhaps applying for the you position mm -hmm. along with perhaps 30 other people. Mm -hmm. So you know, in a way it would give that person sort of an audition, but it wouldn't necessarily at all mean that that's the person that you would end up having for the okay. position. Is, I mean, it, um, is it possible to think about an interim after you've um, interviewed and selected your potential permanent candidate? I'm just wondering if a permanent candidate might not want to start in January, maybe they want to start in the summer. And if it we does that happen, would it make more sense to hire an interim at that point so Karen doesn't have to do double duty all year long, but we have the interim from November to to whenever the to June thirtieth or know, the start a, date of the person? If it's some alone. of some of the thinking around the timeline was that you wanted to select the person you wanted and not have it too dependent on the start date. So what you say actually is a possibility. Um, and if, if you had an internal person who was willing to do it up until the point where you knew the start date of the permanent, that might be a way to have the least disruption. Mm -hmm. Karen, is there? I was just going to say, excuse me, but I was going to say, it could be that the candidate is ready and is able, but we're assuming they'd have to give notice, but they might be. there might be somebody that would be ready to start Pretty soon, and then we wouldn't have to go through that whole process mm -hmm. if we wait till after the interviews are completed. That is correct. That is correct. The other question is: Is there a need to do some backfill that enables you to serve in the role, but provide some support around the work that you do? I think everybody's always already doing that backfill. We have this incredible team that just step up, and uh, we're already meeting regularly. They're already doing a lot. Cheryl Nelson is filling in. Um, so at this point, I think we have the supports in place. We just kind of work it out all together. So then I wonder what, I guess the question then is, what is left the least disruptive to say the staff, right? Is it to make that change again to someone who they know is going to be temporary or to try to work as it is today and look for a permanent position? And <clears throat> once we hire that person and we decide, we understand what their start date is, then maybe we 
take your advice and we say, okay, Karen, is this something you want to do for the next six months because that's what it's going to take? And all right, what, what's the, to your point, Lori, what's the backfill? Or no, you want to go back into your, your current role and, and we put in a, and we look at one of these candidates who expect to be interim superintendents, right? Mm -hmm. So to the suggestion, clearly committee members are interested in it. Um, so <laughs> procedurally, I mean, I'm, not, I'm still like at a loss how to handle this. Um, thanks for telling me. Honestly, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to, without understanding where Karen is at, it really is hard to sort of you well, know, the committee's job tonight would be to decide what the process is they're going to use. Then there would have to be a process to deal with what the decision is. We, we don't do that publicly at this meeting. What we would do is we make the decision how we're going to handle it, what is our conceptual model, what, and then yes. we have to do the work to fill in that. So I think what we've kind of, I, what I heard, the group leaning towards is that we do not pursue an interim at this time. Mm -hmm. We continue aggressively searching for a permanent. Mm -hmm. And at some point, some defined point, either when someone's hired and they have a notice to give, or if we haven't found the ideal candidate, then we revisit this discussion around the need for an interim. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we have three great candidates at that point. If Karen is assuming unable that, to, yeah, assuming that, yeah, if Karen, Karen is unable is, and, or assuming that type of works with Karen, I, yeah. that would be my. I, that's what I would hope for. Yeah. Okay. Is that the consensus? Karen, are you comfortable with that? I am. I actually think it would be more disruptive for us right now to have a couple of different people changing. So if we once we're through the interviews, we'll know what we're looking at, and then I think you'd be able to make a better decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Are you comfortable with that, Cliff? Oh, I'm comfortable with that. I, I, it's the will of the committee. That okay. I'll be comfortable with it. As long as the committee has clarity and knows where they want to go, then that's what we will do. Does that uh, sound like a plan, Dorothy? It sounds like a plan. I would say if that is really what your decision is, that you vote to make Karen the interim, so that there's absolutely no question about who has the, the authority. Well, well she'll get the vote. We already did that. Oh, you already did that. Okay. Yeah, she is You're currently done. the interim. You're she is done. the interim. All right. Terrific. Yeah. She wasn't just sitting in that chair. <laughs> <laughs> the committee went into I went away on vacation. <laughs> no. So yes, Karen is our um, interim superintendent currently. Well, congratulations. <laughs> and we now have a plan. Sounds great. There's, if, if you don't mind my going back to the permanent search for one more second, there was one thing. Oh no, no, no please do. Um, so I, you've appointed your search committee. Um, the other thing that I will need to be able to do uh, when the first time the search committee meets is give them their charge from you. Um, typically, the, your charge would involve how many candidates you would like them to bring forward. Um, usually, it's three to five, the number of finalists that they would bring forward to the committee. No one that they wouldn't want to be superintendent, that they, not to meet a number, but candidates that they feel would be qualified to be superintendent. Um, and the other decision that's usually the committee might want to weigh in on is if there are any internal candidates or if there are any members of Berlin or Boylston who apply, do they get automatically a courtesy interview or are they just part of the pool and evaluated, you know, evaluated as part of the larger pool? Okay, so the, those would be decisions we would make tonight by consensus. Yes. Okay, so let's tackle the first one, which I believe is the, the number of candidates number of to move forward, to forward that the screening committee would recommend. So each person in the screening committee will make a recommendation based on the resumes of X amount. So uh, usually what happens in the screening committee is they look at all the applications, they decide on who they want to bring in to interview, and after they've interviewed those people, 
they take a vote on who the slate they would bring forward as finalists. Okay, right. I, guess I misunderstood the person. Okay, thank you. So, so the question is, like, what would be the, sounds like a range, um, what would be the minimum number of candidates the school committee would want brought forward to be interviewed and to explore? And what would the maximum number be that you would want to interview and explore? From my point of view, less is more. I, I would say three is a good number, both min and max. Okay. There is sometimes, just to let you know, sometimes there is a possibility that a finalist will drop out, will decide not to go forward. So that would and be that's something to have a big bit of an What do you recommend? Three to five. <laughs> <laughs> And you let oh, the I think, I think we don't want to. Yeah, narrow. we don't want. Oh, they could they could bring then as few as three or as many as well. Okay. And you're talking about the candidates that the school committee actually interview. Yes. The screening committee will the interview a certain amount. The screening committee can as many as they want. As many as they want. Okay. Yes. And those the school committee interviews are typically done in one meeting or multiple meetings. That is up to you. Uh, it's done both ways. Sometimes the, the candidates will all come here for a site visit, so they'll have the opportunity to tour the schools and talk to staff, talk to parents. Sometimes school committees interview them at the end of that day, a little bit of an audition of how to handle a long day. Uh, and sometimes they do the site visit and then all the candidates come back in one evening for an interview. That's totally up to you. Another reason to think about the number that, that you want to interview. Yeah, five would be a long five evening. Five would be a long <laughs> I mean, we're just saying three to five, right? So I don't. I wouldn't want to hinder us, right? Because if we came up with four that we thought were great candidates, I don't want to keep us from not being able to bring four. But if it's only three, we only bring three, right? Okay. We're saying three to five. So three to five is fine. What if the committee uh, only recommended two? They need more candidates. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's a great question. Do we, if we say three to five, do we have to bring three? Or we say we? They would aim for three. If they really felt like there were not three people in the pool that they felt would be qualified to be a superintendent here, then they would they would bring two. The problem with two would be if. Sometimes when you're going to go public, right, is when somebody drops out. Yeah. And then we're left with one. And you're left with one, and then you right. probably yeah. start to switch over. Yeah. I don't know. I think the three to five sounds a good sound. Mm -hmm. And it allows flexibility. What do the committee members think? Angela? Yeah? <laughs> Jim? Yes. Yeah. We read. Okay. We're agreed. Three to five. Then there was the second question was. Yes, there was a second question. Um, internal. Internal and uh, people who live in the community. Whether they would. Uh, whether they would automatically be interviewed. By the screening. By the, by the screening committee. Okay. Yes, by the screening committee. If they um, meet the qualifications. If they meet the qualifications. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So just residency or internal wouldn't guarantee you an interview unless you had all the requirements. Correct. Correct. And it wouldn't guarantee you an interview if you say, no, everybody's thrown into the pool equally. So that's your, you know, do you give, do you give preference to those categories or do you say everybody's equal? So what are your thoughts about that, Angela? I... I think it's fine to give uh, an automatic interview to a Berlin or Boylston resident and an internal person for the screening committee. Okay. I see Lori nodding. That's a yes. Yeah, I, I agree. Ed? I agree. Yeah. Jim? Disagree. I think if the person is qualified, they're going to get themselves into the mix anyways. So to say that we're going to give an automatic bid, I don't think is an appropriate way to look at it. I think if there is someone here who's qualified internally, they're going to get themselves in there anyways. 
That's fine too. I agree with that as well. I just think it's, it's again, it falls back to my statement earlier too about <clears throat> wanting someone who is in the, <clears throat> who would like the long term position to be in the interim. I don't think that's in the best interest of an interview process in a fair evaluation for anybody. It's not fair to the staff, it's not fair to the school committee who has to evaluate it now under different circumstances. I just think there's no reason to overcomplicate it if the person is qualified. They'll, and we I are, think, I'm sorry. Oh. No, go ahead. No, no, it's okay. I think the reasons that, because we face this decision at work all the time too, mm -hmm. do we give courtesy interviews to internal? And honestly, we do. And it's more about how you treat people, how people within the district may feel valued and respected. And it's not, it's, Truthfully, it's not giving them any advantage over anyone else. It's just saying, you know, you're a part of this family. You deserve the courtesy of an interview. Um, I, I think that's the rationale. I don't think it's meant to give people any kind of advantage, and I don't think it offsets qualifications and everything else. But I do think it's a courtesy and a sign of respect internally. That's that's just what I've observed in my organization. Okay. Uh, again, I think it's I'm okay with either way we go on this. Okay. I'm just my it was just my opinion. I, I actually think it's a good thing either way, but I, I think your point is well taken though, Jim, that we're you know we we've set the standard for ourselves to find the very best candidate that we can. And if an internal candidate or a member of the community is a candidate and they're not the very best candidate, then we shouldn't be choosing them. But we should give them an opportunity to prove that they can be the very best candidate. So what have we decided? We're going to... Well, I mean, yes, can you vote on well, no, it? Well, normally we try to do consensus. If everybody feels, if the, if the majority of the committee feels strongly with the interviews, then I'm not going to, I don't, I wouldn't let my opinion get in the way of going against that. I, okay. I still believe we shouldn't, my decision would be not to do that, but, but okay. I'm, I'm not going to stand in the way of that, if that is the decision. Okay. So we do have consensus then. Yeah, okay. Yes. Did, I mean, did Ed say? Yeah, Ed. Ed, 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 Ed yes. Okay. okay. And the one thing I don't know is where the screening committee meetings were held. Well, hold on. Yeah. Wait one second. Wait one second. Before we go too far, Dorothy, do you have any advice and or experience with committees who have made that decision on the folks internally? What, I've, what? I've done searches where it's gone both ways. And See, that's the yeah. way I knew you would <laughs> however, however, I can tell you that the, the search committees were, did not, once they had the interview, they didn't, I have, had, have not had experience where someone has pushed her to move someone forward. They didn't feel they were qualified just because they were internal or a member. So do you feel that because Lori brought up a, a lot of excellent points, and I agree with her, and I, I work in the corporate world as well, and that's, I work in a very similar environment. And yes, it's absolutely looked at the way that, that you're describing. I, I would agree with that. Um, so I think Dr. Lori brings up a lot of great pros for it. Do you feel the pros outweigh the cons as it relates to a decision on that aspect? I think the pros probably outweigh the cons. Yeah. I feel yeah. more comfortable now. <laughs> that's what we're looking for. No, I just, that's why, I, hey, she's here to help us, so I figured she can, we'll let her exactly answer the questions. Exactly, good. All right, so now you have your direction. Now. And um, we've requested the meetings be held here, if that's possible. Good. But that answered your question, or somebody's question. That was my question. <laughs> 
Okay. So I think Do you so need anything else from us? Like I don't believe I do. Well, I want to thank you for coming out tonight. Well, you're very welcome. I really appreciate it. You've been a great um, source of help in this process. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Dorothy. Some of you will be seeing a lot more of me before the end of the month. <laughs> yeah. In the month of October. Where's it going? Real time. Because of the Okay, so the next item on our agenda is school committee comments and future agenda items. Do we have any of those? No. All right, thank you, Diana. Hold on, hold on. I just was wondering, are we, were we going to set up a new date for the policy committee meeting? Right, the policy subcommittee meeting got um, changed. It was canceled for yesterday. Yesterday, right. we were going to have a meeting, it was canceled. I was told by Cheryl Nelson that a new date would be set tonight, but maybe I misunderstood that. So I, I think it was wondering. planned for tonight, but I do think we need to set a new date. Um, is it the two of you? Two of us, yeah. Ed and I. It's, it's definitely, uh, Ed's schedule is more challenging than mine, so I would definitely work with Ed first. Do you want to and look at dates? work to accommodate. I'm better off on Mondays. Mondays are better for me. In general, I can make Monday. During the day? During the day, yeah. Uh, Monday, Monday, I mean, I'm during the day or Monday would be fantastic for me. Okay, During the day. you want to do on Monday? Monday evenings or something. Monday evening? Okay. Monday evening is tough. Monday during the day is good. Monday during the day is good? Yes. Okay. During the day is good. During the day is fine. I think it was originally set for 4 o'clock. Uh, is that we, time good? We can do earlier, earlier on Monday. That'd be better for, for I. Is that okay for you, Ed? Yeah, earlier would be good, actually. Actually, you know, I mean, how was it? 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock? One o'clock will work. Then. One o'clock will be then, you know. One o'clock on the 18th? That's. You know something that would Monday. work, even though it was my daughter's birthday that day, she's not going to be home from school until. <laughs> well, I'll just eat lunch, I'll be in the mood. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So one o'clock next week. The 18th, okay, one o'clock on the 18th. You know, September 18th? Oh, September we got to do it September 18th. All right. September the next week. Can we do the next week? I can't, yeah, do, okay. I can't do one o'clock that Monday. Okay. Let's <laughs> look at the next week. week. Monday the 25th. Monday the 25th. Monday the 25th. Okay. Okay, is there any other, uh, are there any other comments? I'm sure you have All right, this, uh, the school committee um, needs to go into executive session at this time. Um, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation and to discuss strategy with respect to negotiations with non-union. And we will reconvene afterwards. So we're going to go into the session. Um, this is just for the Staff. region? I mean, can we close out the elementary school districts? Or um, can we? Yes. Yes. Region district, right? Okay. Mm. we got to do the voting sure. thing. Um, Shall we close the elementary service? Why don't we close the elementary service? Okay. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn the Berlin School Committee? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I have a motion to close the boils? So moved. Second. Second. Oh, that's no. great. <laughs> <laughs> I'll vote aye. <laughs> No, don't do that either. <laughs> Aye. Aye. All right. So those two are close. <laughs> so we need a vote to go into executive session. Aye. This is a reasonable thing to do. Angela's a guy. Aye. Maybe, yeah. Aye. 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 Here you can eye now. Aye. 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 Aye.